gentleman who certainly went on to become a community leader and a former executive board member of Pacific Harbors Council is one of our hosts in making this evening possible. I'd like to introduce you to Lieutenant Governor Brad Owen. Thank you very much and, and great job on, on the presentation of the state of scouting to the state. We look forward to that every year and I, I can't tell you how much we appreciate what the scouts do, uh, particularly well, for all the time that you've been doing it, but particularly in these tough times that we are facing today. It's more critical than ever to have people stand up and help those who are at least able to help themselves and do all the things that you do in your communities. So thank you very, very much for all of that. We will make sure that other people know about that as well as I take some of these cards, things back to, uh, to Olympia, and I'm sure as you travel around and visit uh, different folks, they will know what you've done. Congratulations to uh, the Boy Scouts on the 101st year. Incredible. Uh, and that's 101 years of serving and caring in this great nation of ours. It was formed in 1910. It's my understanding that scouting activities in the state of Washington can actually be traced back to about that same year. And perhaps some of you have been to the scout camp in Whatcom County, Camp Black Mountain on Silver Lake, which is now the oldest continually operating camp in our state. Although not officially a Boy Scout camp until 1927, Camp Black Mountain was reportedly serving scouts and others many years before through an honor camping society called the Order of the Blue Knot. Uh, camp Parsons on Hood Canal opened as a scout camp in 1919. Scouting has certainly made a difference in Olympia as many of our state leaders began as scouts. More importantly, over its 101 years of existence, scouting has made a tremendous impact on our communities and for the hundreds of thousands of individuals and youth the program has nurtured and served over the past century, and for all you leaders out there, I can tell you, research tells you, this is exactly the type of thing that young people need today to deal with the incredible challenges facing them day after day. <laughs> I have a whole speech on resiliency. I won't go through that time. Okay. But, I was, but I will tell you that I was a scout. But unlike the fine young men in this room and my esteemed co-host, an incredible man himself, uh, uh, Attorney General McKenna, I did not obtain the high rank of Eagle. In fact, I'm not sure if I even rank, uh, earned the, the rank of Tenderfoot, but let me explain that. <laughs> let me explain that to you. It was bestowed upon me. But here's how it worked. I was at the Court of Honor, and I was being, or I was being presented the badge in front of everybody in a, in a deal of something like this at Lister, elementary in, in the housing project in Tacoma. And uh, I went up in front of everyone and I turned to the scoutmaster as he was giving it to me because I was shocked he called me up there. And this is what I learned from scouting, you know, the scout oath and all that. I said, but I didn't earn this. I didn't learn how to tie all those night knots and things, you know, and he didn't know what to do. You know, he, he, he didn't know quite what to say. And after a bit of stammering, he finally said, well, it says here you did. And so I got my, that's how I got my tender. Okay. Uh, as I said, I was living at the time in a, in a housing project in, in Tacoma, and our troop was made up of kids from that, from that community. And unfortunately, our troop, I'm afraid, was not the place for the strong and, and encouraging adult leader. And, I'm, and I really don't want to say bad about this man. He, he was trying. Uh, we did not have a lot of resources. He was not there very long. And so it was not a successful uh, scouting program. Um, he had, there, there had been strong mentors. Had there been strong mentors, I might have stayed in scout a lot rather than dropping out as a tenderfoot. And the idea of going on campouts and learning all the things you learned, I love going through the book that we had to learn all the different things and, and that, but we just didn't have in our community that mentor to make sure that we got the opportunity to do it. That's why you as leaders are incredibly important and all of you who are Eagle Scouts can be mentors and I know are mentors to others to push them through well as well. It's incredibly important for our young people and, and research as I mentioned works for the nurturing of, it says that it works for the nurturing of children into successful adults and what we often hear.
here as what I mentioned earlier, the resiliency model. Um, that shows that what works in helping kids through some of the normal negative behaviors in their lives, it shows that there are three common denominators among kids at risk and, and other kids overcoming negative behaviors. And they have had care and support of at least one person, they have been given high expectations, and then helped to meet those expectations, and finally the opportunity to contribute meaningfully to their social environment, and if that's not scouting, I don't know what is. It is what scouting is. Um, there's a program within the Chief uh, Seattle Council called the Scout Reach Foundation. The Scout Reach Foundation initiative focuses energy and resources towards the most vulnerable youth in the Seattle metro area. And I believe Scout Reach is a strong example of the resiliency model at work. Now there's a scout among us, the Eagles in this room, who's living proof that Scout Reach program works. In fact, I think that you uh, just heard from him, the very distinguished scout that gave the report of the state. I believe, I probably pronounce it Chim, is that pronounced correctly? Chim. Yeah. Pronounced correctly. Um, his dad came to the United States from Thailand. Uh, this is a, you know, a great story of America, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, you know. He, they, they came to the United States from Thailand, and his mother's from Laos. His parents moved to the United States during the 1970s to escape the ravages of the Vietnam War, and after spending two years in a refugee camp, they settled in Seattle, had six children, and lived in the Rainier Valley ever since. While kids from Chim's neighborhood in the Rainier Valley, some were breaking into cars and getting involved with gangs, Chim was focused on scouting. He found a strong mentor in his scout master, Scott John Peters, uh, John Peterson. And let me quote from a thank you letter that Jim recently wrote to donors of Scout Reach Foundation. In elementary school, many of my friends participated in Boy Scouts, so I decided to join. Not all my friends joined Scouts, and some of them were involved in gangs. Sometimes I did things with the gangs that I'm not too proud of today, but looking back, I could have been more involved in the gangs had it not been for scouting. In Scouts, I always felt welcome and was kept busy. Now my future plans are to attend college. I'm currently working my way toward my dream of being a firefighter and helping my community along the way, especially you. I would also like to be a scoutmaster myself one day. So. So good, good job to you. If only there had been a scout reach program in Tacoma when I was uh, in scouting, perhaps. Uh, maybe I had had done something more productive than become lieutenant governor. <laughs> I want to share one, one more story with you, and that's the story of another scout in this room. And, and I'm not just picking on these two guys, because all of you have your stories, and I know they're probably equally as important. But I, I want to share this story about uh, Ben, Benjamin Dirks. Now, he lives in West Seattle. He's in the Eagle Scout Troop 375 in the uh, Aki, Aquila District of the Chief Seattle Council. He's is the son of an Eagle Scout, Greg, and happens to be nephew of Greg's identical twin brother, Brian, who's here, he's on my staff. Uh, although that familiar connection has nothing to do with Ben's being here today, here is Ben's story in his own words. The scouting program has taught me how to rely on myself, meet new people, and work in a team. I've learned leadership through example, and the kindness will gain me more respect than frustration and sarcasm. Growing up with scouting, I learned not to take my family for granted and how to respond to medical emergencies. Near the beginning, I will admit, I did not enjoy scouting. I was only in it so I could get into a good college when I got my eagle. Uh, <laughs> honesty. <Yep. laughs> now I look back, and I realize how wonderful the program is and how much I have changed in response to my experiences on 50-mile hikes in various campouts. The program taught me what it truly means to be a man. Respect yourself and others. Have fun in the outdoors and observe your environment for new challenges and adventures to pursue so you can derive the most out of life. My biggest rewards from Boy Scouts were participating in the summer hikes. I learned the skills which I deem most useful in real life situations through the three 50 mile endeavors that I participated in while in Scouts. I also learned communication skills and the power of a strong work ethic. I will apply the lessons learned in scouting by always preparing myself for potential scenarios that may arise, such as earthquakes or injury. The leadership skills will be useful for college and whatever career I choose. Being an Eagle Scout will definitely make a difference. People will perceive me differently, and I can reap the benefits of that alternate perception. Now, and you're absolutely right about that, Ben, but what makes Ben's story even more noteworthy is that he is 
hearing impaired to the point where he cannot hear much at all without the assistance of hearing aids. About that, Ben tells us hearing was only an issue for him when he participated in water-related activities or merit badges. Luckily, Ben says he was surrounded with guys he had known for many years who all helped him understand what the instructors were saying. More importantly, in true Eagle Scout fashion, Ben has a winning attitude about his impairment. He says, and I quote, it's part of who I am. It is actually a blessing because it gives me a stronger work ethic. Ben, you're an incredible person. <laughs> Update. He's um, been accepted to five colleges and wants to pursue a degree in outdoor recreation and leadership, and he will be formally awarded his Eagle Scout of Ceremony on this Sunday. Congratulations to you. So good job, Ben. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations to all of you Eagle Scouts out here that are with us tonight. Many who have your own great stories of how scouting both challenged you and has impacted your lives, and you will have those stories for the rest of your life. Congratulations to your parents and to the Scoutmasters as well. For you have raised five young, fine young men who will no doubt go on to do many extraordinary things. Author Joseph Campbell said, Opportunities to find deeper powers within ourselves come when life seems most challenging. So my challenge to each of you is to remember all that you have learned in scouting as you move on in this world. Take those skills and put them in your backpack of life tools and use it to find those deeper powers you've acquired through the scouting program to develop new opportunities and become strong, exemplary leaders in whatever you do. With these skills, you will always be ready you will always be prepared. We can't thank you enough. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be able to present you with this book. A little light reading, <laughs> but it tells you what scouting is doing today, and we appreciate your comments. Thank you very so much.